This is Carl at Nashville RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Salem Cruise Light Travel Trailer. The model number is 240BHXL. So this is not a floor plan video, <coughs> excuse me, or a show or a uh, sales video. This is a how-to video. So I'm going to show you some of the features and how they work, okay? Here we are the door side rear and we have uh, the uh, low point drains for winterizing the trailer. Okay. Comes with a power awning with an LED strip. Two doors. So obviously, this one goes right into the bathroom. So people don't have to run through your trailer in the summer, kids, grandkids, whatever. Um, outside speakers. Keep in mind that this is the vent for the range hood that's over the stove. So um, this there's a baffle in here. You can see it right here, hopefully. Um, you can snap it shut or you can leave it open to flap freely. So keep in mind, you want it flapping freely when you're venting to the outside, otherwise it won't vent to the outside. So you always want to make sure that's open if you're venting. Okay? So this right here, I mean the most common way to get water to the trailer obviously is the city water hookup, which is on the other side. Now this, this is to fill your fresh water tank here. If you happen to be camping somewhere that doesn't have city water on the campsite, <clears throat> you can pre-fill your tank and uh, use the onboard water pump to pump the water. You know, a lot of the older state parks, for example, won't have plumbing on the campsites, so you just go to their fill station and fill it up and you're all set. I'll show you the uh, city water hookup when we get over there. Um, this is just a TV out and power, so you can put a TV out here. This is a port for your sprayer, okay? It's not looking right though, I'm going to have to have them look at that. Okay, this is an outside kitchen. This is the sprayer I told you about right here, the coil sprayer that will plug into the port. Now this, this is an LP line here with a quick connect. That's how you plug your griddle in. Let me look down here for a second. When you plug it in, it goes right here to this LP quick connect fitting. Okay, so you're just gonna pull it out. Let me get a hold of it here. Pull it out, connect this female side here to, let me see if I can spin the camera around, to here. And then the other end will go to the quick connect under the trailer. Alrighty. Just an AC refrigerator. Okay. This is your, this is your hitch. It's a, it's a Husky Centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. It's a, it's a good one. We're going to show you how it works when you pick up. Um, it's a very good hitch. Oh, on your stabilizer jacks here, I need to show you that there's a, you know, these are just typical um, scissor type stabilizers that use a three quarter inch crank or a socket. Um, so, this has, an, they, this has another section, this yellow section called a strong arm. Let me walk to the back where we can see, the, see it better so I can explain it to you if you don't know. So there's one on, e one on each corner here, obviously. So this strong arm here, basically it t when, you're, when you're, your stabilizer jacks are extended and you're, you've got them how you want them, you can tighten this up here, this T-handle up right here, so the inner, <clears throat> the inner tube can't uh, slide into in the outer one. So what it does is it takes away the forward and rearward movement of the trailer. So um, it's, it makes a much more stable, stable uh, campsite, but the thing is, you have to remember to open this whenever you're raising or lowering these you want to open this t-handle first so it it can travel freely that's important so when you get it what, the only time you're going to crank them down tight is when you get the tra trailer stabilized like you want it okay all right all right so moving forward you've got a, a deep cycle marine battery and this is the kill switch right here. You can shut the battery off if you choose to. Um, you have two LP tanks, which are full, obviously. You have a, a, um, a power uh, tongue jack here. So um, you just go up and down with it, obviously. And then you have a hitch light on here, too. Hitch it up for hitching up in the dark. So um, you also have a power tongue jack. Now, if this was to fail, you, you can pull this cap off here. And there should be a, a smaller crank in here somewhere. Let me look. 
yeah, the, the smaller crank hanging on the wall there, that'll fit right in there, and you can actually crank this manually in an emergency. So if you get into a, uh, for some reason it stops working, you can still always get hitched and unhitched. All right. This is it's more of the, the other side of the pass-through storage. This uh, is your dump hose, obviously, that comes with it. Now your slide out, just so you know, there are different kinds of slide out. This particular one is called a Schwintec. It has kind of a different name now because it's been bought by Lippert, but people still refer to it as a Schwintec, in case you need to uh, talk to somebody about it or talk about it. It's a Schwintec and it's owned by Lippert now. Okay, so you have a uh, 30 foot, 30 amp power cord, and we give you a reducer to reduce it down to, uh, to 20 amps. You have your, uh, your valves here, three valves. The black one is back here, if you can see that. That's for toilet water and waste. These two are gray. Gray tank number one, which is your sink and, and shower, and then gray, gray tank number two, sometimes referred to as a galley tank, is, is the waste from your kitchen sink. All right. So you always dump the black first because it's the dirtiest of water. Then you dump the grays. Now if you leave, let me look over here real quick. Yeah, if you leave your black tank valve open, you can bring the hose at the dump station over to here, hook it up right there, turn it on, and it'll spray the inside of the black tank out. Clean off the sensor so you get a good accurate reading on your monitor panel. So if they have a working hose at the dump station, I mean one that hasn't been run over or something like that, screw it on there and, it's, and it'll get your black tanks much cleaner. Black tank much cleaner. Okay. This is your water heater. There's switches to control it on the inside of the trailer. Let me see what we got here. It's nearly impossible to do with one hand here, but I'll, I'll get it, I hope. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'll just set this down for now. So, thing to keep in mind is right here in the lower left-hand corner, there's a switch, an on and off rocker switch. That controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover. You light, it, you light the gas inside the trailer, but you just gotta be aware of for the electric heating element, this switch right here operates it. Never run this element when there's not water in the water tank. So if you have a drain the tank for the for the summer because you're and you're going to go camping in the fall, let's say, so you just drain the water out so it doesn't get uh, all stagnant and smell like rotten eggs. Um, make sure you refill it before you turn this on. That's important. To drain your your water heater tank, is, this is the drain right here. It takes an inch and a sixteenth six point socket with an extension and a breaker to either a ratchet or a bar to break it free. And there's also an anode rod attached to it, so it's long, it's six or eight inches long, and um, therefore it's kind of heavy on the other side, so when you're, when you're starting this, when you're screwing it in, always do it by hand. Uh, make sure you can turn it a few revolutions by hand so you know that you're on the threads correctly, and then you can use a, a wrench on it, but you don't want to strip it out, obviously. Okay, so this is the burner for the gas, I'll show you the switch inside when we get to that, okay? This is, an, this is a pressure release valve, just like your water heater at home. Never, never pull the, the plug out of here when there's pressure in the water tank. So you always want to shut off the water source and then open a, your hot water valve inside to take the pressure off. Otherwise, this will shoot out of there like a cannonball. And you never open it while it, the water's in here is hot. Wait till it cools down. I know it seems, uh, seems obvious, but you'd be surprised. Or maybe you wouldn't. I don't know. Um... This is your city water hookup right here. That's the most common way to get water to the trailer. You just uh, uh, hook the hose on there and turn on, you're all set. This is just cable and satellite through, coax. This is pre-wired for a backup camera, which is right there. So if you're going to uh, get one, it takes a Furion camera that fits in that housing. Um, also, while we're looking up, the manufacturer states you should inspect your roof every 90 days. That's not this trailer, it's every trailer ever made. So. You just want to look for cracking or separation up there. Make sure there's no way to, for water to get in. You look at the roofing attachments and the roofing material, make sure it was not damaged by low branches or a road debris flipping up there, something like that, okay? All right, so let's go inside. Walk through this soap here. Okay. 
So, first thing we see here is the control panel. This is telling us it's pre-wired for a solar panel. That's The wires are behind there, that's all it's telling you. There's also probably a, a, a port on the roof for the antenna for, uh, well, I mean for, not the, for the solar panel itself. So, okay. Um, do it this way. So, first of all, you have your, your awning, your power awning. Never leave it out unattended. Then you have your slide room, obviously. I think I got it backwards there. Oh, yeah. So, it's not backwards. So, that's your power awning. Like I said, never leave it out, off, out unattended. And that's for your slide room there. Your water pump to turn on your water pump right there. Remember, if you're, if you're pumping out of your city or your fresh water tank because you don't have city water, that's the, uh, you turn the pump on first. Now, it's also used to winterize the trailer, keep that in mind. Turn your water heater on gas, it's right here. There's the fault light right there, just so you know. These are just lights. And then, of course, you have your battery, which is charged. Fresh water, empty. Black is empty. Gray 1. And galley, which is gray 2, all empty. They grab you up in one-third increments. Once you get past two-thirds, you got to start thinking about dumping the gray in the black tank, of course. And this is a dimmer. You just, you just run your thumb over it. That's all. Keys, obviously, right here. This is a reducer for your for your power cord. Um, so there are. Let me see where you put the remotes here. Hold on, please. Oh, right here. So this is your fireplace remote here. So you can see that low right there, and then high. Okay, that's the fan speed. So. Um, it's also it's a good space heater, so it has a two-speed fan in there. Um, you can change the color of the crystals, as you can see. You can also change the flame color, like that. Okay, and it also has a timer on it, so you can set the timer to turn it on and turn it off when you want to. It's a good thing to have because you've got limited supply of LP gas. So. Um, on those days, mornings or evenings, whatever, that you, uh, it's not quite cold enough to run the furnace, you can actually sell, save LP by just turning this on. It runs off campground power, and um, it'll take the chill out of this room and out of the trailer, actually. So it's a, it's a good thing. That's off. All right, so this is your stereo here. This is the, the uh, remote for it here. I'll set that right there with this. Okay. So this one is, um, it has a AM FM radio, right? It's got, it's got a Bluetooth so you can stream wirelessly from your phone or your tablet. Um, it has a, a USB so you can take all your favorite uh, albums, put them on one USB stick and take them with you. This, this HDMI is an in, so that's what you go into the system. Let's say you have, you got your TV set up, right? And you have a portable Blu-ray player. Well, you could just set it right here plug it in there and go straight into the system that way if you wanted to. Also this has two speaker zones, zone one and zone two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. So there's a lot you can do with it. Okay, so let's walk this way. This is the microwave, obviously. This is the range hood I told you about. Remember about opening the bath hole when you're going to run the fan. It's important. Um, I don't know if he's got gas turned on right now, so let's just see. I'll talk you through it either way. Always travel with that top closed. That's important. You spark this by turning this knob clockwise. And then you've got three knobs, obviously, for three burners. And then you've got your oven here. So let's see if there's any gas turned on. No, it does not have it on. So anyway, when I turn this, I turn this on, and I turn this clockwise, and it'll light the burners. All right, and you also have a... Uh, uh, light here. Now, down at the bottom, all the way to the back, if you can see it back there, there's a pilot light back there. Let me see if I can spark it to, so you can see it. I don't see it. Either way, okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the oven knob. You're going to go to the picture of the of the pilot light right there, and then depress it. You keep it depressed, then you'll light it down down here at the back. After it lights, you hold it for another. Uh, um, 10 seconds or so till the thermocouple heats up, then you go to operating temperature. The main thing is though, when you shut it off, the, the pilot light will go out, so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. 
Let's put this back in the down position. Okay, so your, your refrigerator is a 12 volt DC compressor refrigerator. So it's a compressor refrigerator, but it just works on 12 volt DC. That's your latch so you don't uh, get the doors banged up. Your thermostat is very simple. You hit the mode button to light it up, then you can scroll through just by hitting the button. Uh, you, you've got fan, which is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. Then you're going to have cool, which is the air conditioner, and then furnace, which is the LP furnace. If they give you an option for, for fan speed, always use fan speed on auto. Okay, it works much better that way. So you have your, your two bunks here. Now, <clears throat> down here, let me get this out of the way here. First of all, I'll take this off. I can. There we go. So this is the power converter. It converts AC to DC power. So you can see on this side, you got 120 AC circuit breakers, just like you'd see at home. And they're all labeled. So this is the distribution panel right here. Then on this side, the uh, 120 AC is converted to 12 volt DC, right? So these are 12 volt fuses and they're all labeled. Also, this is important too, this is also a battery tender. It'll keep your battery charged when you're plugged in. So as long as you're plugged into shore power, it's going to sense how much energy your battery needs and keep it charged up. Of course, when you're pulling it down the road, the, the uh, alternator on your tow vehicle is going to keep it charged too. So one thing to know, these two 40 amp fuses here are masters. If you ever have issue with a wild power surge or lightning strike and the 12 volt side goes out, always check here first because that's 99 out of 100 times that's, that's, uh, that's where the problem is going to be. It's just doing its job. Okay. That's got WD40 all over. This is the, the uh, carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green, like it is. Um, if it goes off, it's detected carbon monoxide, LP gas. Take everybody outside, leave the door open. Um, turn the gas off out front and or at the front and figure out what's going on. Okay. So, this is your, let me see if you put a battery in here. Yes. So this is your, uh, let me get this back up here now. That's your smoke detector, of course. Now, uh, you can drop this, uh, the table, you can take the legs off and, and drop it onto these cleats and then use the uh, cushions to fill in the space and you, uh, you have another bed there. This is just all your paperwork for all the different uh, components. Okay. Bathroom works like any other bathroom. The sink and the shower do anyway. The toilet, if you haven't had an RV toilet, you have to, the thing to know is this is the flush pedal. So you step on it and it flushes. That's just residual water pressure right now. So the thing is you can't use it dry. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. Then you'll come in here with a one dose of chemical, you'll put it right in the bowl. Then you'll step on the pedal, water will come swirling out because it's hooked to the water. And it'll wash the water and the chemical down into the black tank, which is directly below. You stand on that long enough to put at least a gallon of water in the black tank along with the chemical. Some people use more, it's up to you, but figure, figure at least a, a gallon. And then you can use it. You can't use it dry because the smell will be terrible and it can get clogged up, right? So you always want to have chemical and water in it before you use it. And of course you have a fan here. The fan is great for uh, condensation too. If, uh, if you got a bunch of people over and it's a uh, time of year where uh, you, know, you start to get a little condensation from the breath, if you just turn that fan on and let it run, it'll pull all that right out. You'll never have an issue with it. Okay, so let's go this way. So you got a clothes hamper here. You got some storage under the bed. This is the emergency exit here. Very simple. Um, you got shades here too, by the way. But you're just going to go like this. You're going to push it through, all the way through. And then you grab a hold of the screen, this red tab. Pull the screen out and you can exit in an emergency through there. You can also use it for ventilation, obviously. Um, last but not least, this is the uh, your TV hook up here. You got signal and... Um, power and back here you have a backing plate so you could you could actually uh, put a TV bracket there if you want to okay
All right, I think that does it. Let's move, let me look around here. Your uh, pantry has a light in it. Always remember to, sh remember to shut all the lights off before you, you're traveling with it. Um, okay, so uh, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please remember what I said about inspecting the roof every 90 days. People, generally speaking, don't inspect their roof enough, so uh, go up there yourself or have somebody go up there and just look it over. If you see an issue, take care of it immediately. Um, also, uh, right now this this trailer is is dewinterized. It's in, it's in camping mode, so that all the antifreeze has been purged from the system and replaced with fresh water, so it's all ready to go. Okay, thank you.